Ah, White Claw, the hard seltzer that stole summer of 2019. What may have started as an ironic drink for your Saturday rooftop barbecue has now become completely mainstream and embraced by people coast to coast. In fact, it's become so popular that as of filming this video, we have found ourselves in a bit of a shortage. And so tons of people have reached out asking me to come to the rescue and teach us all how to make this at home. Now we're gonna try to do as accurate a recreation as possible down to the nutrition facts. So what do we know about White Claw? It's 5% alcohol, 100 calories in a 12 ounce can and about two grams of sugar. And it's also gluten-free, comes in a variety of flavors like mango, grapefruit, and a few others. Now to carbonate this, I'm gonna be using this home carbonator similar to a soda stream, but if you don't have one, that's totally okay. Just use carbonated water instead. Now what else do we know about White Claw? Well, it's actually not just vodka soda in a can. It really doesn't contain any vodka at all. It's actually made through fermentation, like beer. But they actually start from a base of sugar, instead of grains like barley or wheat, but they likely take that approach for tax reasons. Distilled spirits are taxed at a higher rate in most states. But this is not a home brewer's channel, so we're just gonna do a gluten-free vodka distilled from fruit. All right, let's kick it off by making the mango-flavored version first. We're gonna start by adding 10 ounces or about 300 mils of very cold water. And I'm choosing 10 ounces, so we have room for the other ingredients to hit that 12 ounce mark. Next up, 1.5 ounces or 45 mils of our 80 proof vodka. And here I've got a can of 100% mango juice. To get us to those two grams of sugar, we're just gonna add about one half ounce or 15 mils. Now the great thing about this carbonator is you can scale it up. Two claws, three claws, bottle it up, take it to go, and you know, you have your friends who bought the variety pack, didn't have the mango flavor, and they're just looking at you all jealous with your homemade craft white claw. Another bonus is the satisfying air release valve. And so here we go. One homemade, artisanal, gourmet, handcrafted, mango-flavored claw. Let's pour it into a Collins glass and do a side-by-side -side taste test. First, let's give the original canned version a try. And, you know, to be honest, for what they're trying to do, it's pretty good. It's not winning any awards for complexity, but it's light, crisp, and refreshing. It is what it is but were we able to replicate it? And I think we are damn close. We just lack a little bit of that acidity that you get in the can. So we're gonna try adding about a gram of citric acid. If you don't have this, the equivalent would be around three-fourths of an ounce or about 22 mils of fresh lemon juice. So just drop in the citric acid. We're gonna give it a quick stir and let's try this again. Okay, this time I think we nailed it. Aside from the color, because we're using natural mango juice, it's pretty much the same. Plus ours comes in at exactly 100 calories and 5% ABV. But maybe you're the kind of gentleman that reaches for the Pamplemousse LaCroix, and so the grapefruit claw is more up your alley. Well, I got you covered during this white claw drought. We're gonna be starting with some water again, this time about 9.5 ounces or a little shy of 300 mils. Next, we're gonna need another 1.5 ounces or 45 mils of our vodka. And then one ounce or 30 mils of fresh grapefruit juice with the pulp filtered out. Lock and load in the carbonation station. And again, if you don't have one of these machines, just swap the still water for carbonated water. Okay, now press the vent gas button. And here we have a beautiful glass of organic, mixologist approved, uh, farm to table white claw. But all that matters is that we have recreated it faithfully and here we have the original Grapefruit White Claw, very refreshing. And again, our version is really close. We just need a little bit more citric acid to kick it up a bit. So we're just gonna add about half a gram or so, just a small pinch, stir that in. And that should get us to just the right amount of acidity and yep, we got it. That is a pretty dead on recreation of the original. I will say you can taste a bit of the vodka, but it is pretty subtle. But wait, summer is officially over. How can we make this drink relevant for the fall season and make it even more basic? The answer is, of course, pumpkin spice white claw. And we're gonna start by making a homemade pumpkin spice syrup that is actually phenomenal. Grab a saucepan and we'll begin by adding 1.5 cups or about 300 grams of demerara sugar and then 1.5 cups or about 350 mils of water. Then put that on the stove and bring to a boil. Once that's boiling, remove from the heat, and then we're gonna start by adding 1 4th cup, or about 60 grams of canned pumpkin. Then drop in four cinnamon sticks, 1.5 teaspoons or three grams of ground ginger, one teaspoon or two grams of ground cloves, 
And finally, one half teaspoon or about one gram of ground nutmeg. Whisk it all together and put it back on the burner on low. Let that simmer for about 10 minutes and then let cool for about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna strain everything out using a nut milk bag or you can use a cheesecloth. Bottle this up and it'll keep in the fridge for at least two weeks. Now this stuff is so good it should be illegal, but the young people tell me there are no laws when you're drinking claws. For our pumpkin spice white claw, we're gonna start with 10 and a half ounces or a little over 300 mils of fresh water. Again, 1.5 ounces or 45 mils of vodka. And we're just gonna do about a teaspoon or five mils of our pumpkin spice syrup here. Add that CO, two, three, four, push the button. Ladies and gentlemen, they didn't think we could do it. They said we didn't have the technology, but I stand here today holding the world's first pumpkin spice white claw. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Well, Jeff, I will be the judge of that. Cheers. And you know what? It's exactly what you'd expect it to taste like. You don't typically get these Christmas fall flavors with a light sparkling beverage though. So it's kind of weird at first, but on the second or third sip, yeah, it's actually quite nice. But if you've gone to the trouble to make that pumpkin spice syrup, let's get a little more out of it. I mean, yes, you can dump it in your coffee and it's gonna be amazing, but on my Patreon, I've got a new recipe for a pumpkin spice rum old fashioned that is excellent. And if you come up with any new cocktails with this syrup, definitely let me know. Cheers.